Special Agents, Mrs G back again with some more reading comprehension practice. I'm here to talk to you this week about paper two. Okay, so as a special agent you will complete two special agent reading jobs and paper two is a little bit different. This reading paper is different because there is usually a lot more to read. You get a separate booklet with the text in to read, it's usually two different types, story and some non-fiction and a different booklet for you to with the questions in for you to write the answers. First of all, you are special agent readers. Mrs G believes in you, your teachers believe in you. You can do this year too. This is just going to be a type of task that is going to take you a little bit longer. If you remember your special agent training, if you read carefully, if you find an underline, if you go back and look again for the answers and don't rush, you will be absolutely fine. Don't panic. Take your time, remember to check each question for the page that you need to look for the answers on and as always my top tip in life, when you find it, underline it. So you will get something that looks like this, you will have one booklet that will have the stories on and that will be called the reading booklet. Then you will have the normal special agent kind of booklet with that is yellow, that is for where the questions are and where you write your answers. Okay, You will probably be given a little bit longer to do this job than any of your other special agent jobs. Okay, You're all really special agent readers, shall we give this a go? As always, you can read the writing on the screen before me, you can pause this or you can let me read it to you and we can work it out together. This is special agent training. Just don't share these tips with anyone who's not a special agent. Let's go. So first of all, notice how much writing is on one page. Don't worry. Let's take our time to read it before we even think about the questions. Statues from Greece. One child is it and stands in the centre of a large space counting loudly. The other players walk around waiting for that child to shout statue. When they hear this word, the players freeze like statues. Anyone who is moving is out. Then the child who is it tries to make the others laugh or move. The last player remaining as still as a statue is the winner and becomes the new it. This game can be great for practicing your balance if you are standing in an awkward position. Oomch Neech from Pakistan. The name of this game means up down. It involves lots of running around. Children have to be up off the ground, such as on a chair or down where they must be touching the ground. One child is it and has to catch the others. It uses up lots of energy and is great fun. Kangaroo Skippy Roo from Australia. In this game, one child pretends to be a sleeping kangaroo with its eyes shut. When a player touches the kangaroo's shoulder, the kangaroo has to guess who it is. This game is all about guessing and you can see that we are on page 5. That's important because if we look at the questions now, something that we've not seen before is before the question you've now got some brackets and it tells you the page that you need to be searching for the answer. So the answer to these questions are on page 5. That is a big, big, big thing that you need to notice. Question 3. Look at the statues section. Why is statues a good name for this game? Let's go back and reread it. Are you ready? We need to go to page five. We're going to be finding out about statues and later on finding what, out what oomch niche means. Let's do question three first. So first of all, we were on page five. So we're looking on the right page. We need to find the statues section. There it is. So we need to find an underline where it says statues. There we go. So... When they hear the word, the player freezes like statues. Okay, so why is statues a good name for this game? Because they have to freeze like statues. Did you get that answer? You have to freeze like a statue. Fantastic. Number four, what do the words oomch niche means? Going back to page five. Okay, let's go back. We're still on page five. Ooch niche. Shout stop when you see me get to the right section. <gasps> stop. There we are. Ooch niche. I love that word. If we read the first sentence underneath the title, it says the name of this game means up down. So what do the words ooch niche mean? Just read it. Have you got the answer? It means up down. Well done. Now sometimes you might have something like this, which is a poem. Let's read it together. Cobweb morning. Most of the time, spiders' webs are almost invisible. 
but sometimes if it is frosty or damp you can see the webs almost everywhere you look. This is because ice or water drops have stuck to the fine threads of the webs. On a Monday morning we do spellings and maths and silent reading. But on the Monday after the frost we went straight outside. Cobwebs hung in the cold air everywhere. All around the playground they clothed the trees, dressed every bush in veils of fine white lace. Each web a wheel of patient spinning, each spider hidden, waiting. Inside we worked all morning to capture the outside. Now in our patterns and poems we remember the cobweb morning. Let's see what we've got to answer now. Now that was page 7, so don't worry we're on the right page. Have you spotted it says page 7, number 8. The children saw the cobwebs in, tick one, a park, a street, a garden or a playground. Let's not guess, let's go back, let's go and search, find and underline the very first mention of cobwebs in the poem. Cobwebs, can you see this verse of the poem? Cobwebs hung in the cold air everywhere, all around the playground. So where did they see the cobwebs? That's right, in the playground. Fantastic, well done. Number nine, what did the children usually learn on a Monday morning? Page seven. So we've got to go and find out what they were learning on a Monday morning. Okay, so let's find and underline that phrase on a Monday morning. <gasps> there it is, right at the top of the poem. On a Monday morning, we do spellings, maths and silent reading. Okay, so they do spellings, maths and silent reading, don't they? Well done. B. What did children learn about this Monday morning when they went outside? So now we need to go back to the poem and find out what they learnt when they went outside. I'm going to look for the word outside. On the Monday after the frost, we went straight outside. What did they learn about? That's right, they learnt about cobwebs. So you could write a sentence to tell me the children learnt about cobwebs. Well done special agents. Something new to read now. Lessons on Monday the 1st of August at 10am and bring a swimming kit, a towel, a packed lunch. You must bring an adult with you so speak to your parents or carers about this wonderful offer. Your swimming ability will be checked and you will be put into one of three groups. Tadpole, goldfish, dolphin. During your lessons, we ask you to keep to these golden rules. Number one, listen to the trainers and follow their instructions at all times. Number two, help to keep changing rooms clean and tidy. Number three, do not shout or dive into the pool. Sea Spray Pool will provide all of your equipment and the swimming instructors. At the end of the course, there will be a gala with races and a party. So that was page four. Number two, when are the swimming lessons? When? So we need a date or a time or a place. Uh, sorry, not a place, not where, when, what day, what time. Right at the top there, did you spot it? The lesson on Monday the 1st of August at 10am. So when are the swimming lessons? Monday the 1st of August at 10am. Well done, special agents. Don't forget, you've got this. You are special agent readers. Don't share these tips with anyone else. See you next time.